Okay, we talked gun fire, uh, gun fire shot, holistic shot. The reason I use this particular drawing is because if something gets hit with a bullet, it's not like it's a, it's the the middle of an arrow target. You know, when you, you pull, you get a bullseye. It's not like that where the ripples are very even and uniform as they come out. It's going to depend on the type of material, the direction it's coming from, and so on. You are more likely to have an issue where something branches out in any different ways like this. Ballistic shock test, it's a momentum exchange. Okay, you have the, the action of the bullet hitting. You have the equal and opposite reaction from the metal that may flex or force that, that bullet to bounce back off. This is a tank turret. You can tell it's taken a few hits. Okay, but they test these to make sure that they can withstand it because people tend to fire on tanks trying to get them to, to stop coming toward them. And the turret is what they're going to aim at in the hopes that they're going to down the people that are inside. It does have a lot of limitations. Again, it, there's nothing that allows you to do this at higher low temperatures. You could possibly tailor it in, but it might be difficult. This was originally added in version F. Um, it was first specifically mentioned in version B under related tests, high impact, and then it pointed to mil S901. It is not included as pyroshock because there is a large exchange of momentum and thus behaves more like a mechanical shot. This does include live fire, hammer impact, and drop table. The sequence, this is typically considered independent because most things are not built specifically to receive bullets. Now, you can expect, though, that if you're a tank, you are going to receive shot at you. Okay, and I mean, we've all seen old movies where somebody was able to blow up a truck, a, a tank. Um, there can be system failure as a result of destruction of the structural integrity of microelectronic chips, including their mounting configuration, system component failures, and so on. This is an example from conformalcoding.com of what, what happened when a shock was created, and it started to break the conformal coating right away from it. So you could have issues with the crystal, ceramics, epoxies, glass envelopes, anything that could possibly chip away could be affected by something causing a shock like that. You can also have system component failure as a result of sudden velocity change of the structural support of the system component. So you've got these six different ways of, uh, basically the procedures are just different ways of handling the test. Related to shock, high impact shipboard equipment, you would use MIL S901. Fuses and fuse components is MIL standard 331. Um, combined temperature and shock test, perform shock tests at standard ambient conditions unless a higher low temperature shock test is required. This just gives an idea of the average shock. You have a, a worst case upper limit, a lower limit here. You're just trying to, as you're measuring, make sure it is somewhere between the upper and lower limits shown. Depending on the procedure, you can have live fire shock, hammer impact, metal to metal impact, typically by a gas driven projectile, or a drop table. This is, from NASA, a gas gun, which is able to shoot projectiles for the impact. Bladeforms.com is showing a hammer impact here. The position the instruments is using a, a drop tester. So test interruption, um, like any of the other gunfire ones, you just redo it. You can actually have a gun like this mounted for the gunfire. Uh, this one... Um, Shows a lifting system with a test board, drop table, and so on, and another style of pendulum. What was interesting to me is this is, is supposed to help identify any issues that could come about due to enemy fire, which, which always, yeah, okay, I find a lot funny in here. It's because friendly fire could also be harmful. Okay, but I guess, you know, I would have just said live fire. 
but but they're assuming it's live enemy fire. It is the ballistic shock response of material in general is very unpredictable. It is not repeatable. And you don't know the angle. You know, is it up, down? Where is it coming from? Is your item going to be in exactly the same place if you're moving already? So, uh, if for measuring, you can use a laser velocimeter. That always makes me think of velociraptors. Did anybody see the new Jurassic Park? Was it good? Jurassic World. World. Jurassic World. It was. I thought it was okay. It wasn't any rock cluster also. No. No. But if you're a dinosaur, not you like Yeah. It. 